All right, uh, I wanted to post a video here uh, of issues that are that came up in 1.4. Oh, hopefully you can go back to 1.4, see what you did, and maybe uh, make sure that uh, if you entered everything correctly here, or just so you know for future reference here. So <clears throat> I got uh, four problems that were submitted. Uh, number one, number nine, number 13, and number 15. So I wanted to go through and uh, put this in for number one. I think the issue for most students is the input value. And so if you look over here, it's, it's uh, you got to put it into exponent mode first, and then you got this multiplication symbol. So that was sort of the issues here. So just for example, right, 144 as a product of prime factors. Well, one little issue with this is this whole concept of, um, first of all, breaking down. 144 and just quickly here breaking down 144 if we were to do that you take 144 and again you can start breaking those down by 12s maybe it's the easiest one here so 12 times 12 and the 12s break down to the 3 times 4 again 3 times 4 and eventually 2 times 2 for the 4 and the other 4 so really how do you break this down is you have the one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four times three and a three. So three and a three. Okay, how do we write it in terms of our computer program here? So it'd be two times two times two. There's four two, so it'd be two to the fourth times. Looks like three to the second. Now the little issue is yes, they have to be in exponential form, which means this form has to be here. And then the other little problem is this little multiplication symbol. The multiplication symbol that XYZ uses is the asterisk key. It is, uh, if you need to get to it, it is shift eight. That is the that is the asterisk key. That's the multiplication symbol that uh, the. So don't put a closed dot. Don't put a comma. You got to put it in just like that. So back over here. So we're going to say 2 to the exponent of 4 times, and basically that asterisk key right there, 3 to the second power. And let's see if I'm correct. And you can preview this here. I suggest you always preview this. And again, notice the multiplication comes in. Notice the asterisk key does come in as a multiplication marker. Okay. Let me click Submit and see what happens. Cool, I got it right. That's exactly what I wanted to do. All right, so number one, taken care of. Number nine is the next one that came in on the on the form quite a bit here. It is to factor this down. How do you factor t to the fourth minus 81? Now your problem for number nine could be a little bit different, but it's going to be the same process here. So t to the fourth minus 81. How do I break that down? How do I factor? How do I input? So t to the fourth minus 81. That's my problem. Again, your problem could be a little bit different, but I think most of you guys have an exponent of 4 over here and a perfect square on this side. So the way I would break this down first is to say, you know, what causes... Actually, first of all, this is a difference of two perfect squares. So it cancels off like this. It reduces down to a plus b and an a minus b. So notice in our case, our thing that's being squared is 2 or t squared. But it's being squared to give you an 81, that would be a 9. So according to this formula, t goes into here, 9 goes into there, t goes into there, nine, I'm sorry, t squared. There you go. So this would be t squared plus 9 and t squared minus 9. Now, if you look at this, you ask yourself, you know, can I factor this down any more? And this part here, the first parenthesis, will not factor down anymore. Because in order to factor stuff, perfect squares down, you need to have a minus in between them. But this right here, t squared minus 9, that actually does factor down into a t plus 3, t minus 3. Okay, so then really the, the final form should be t to the second plus 9, then it'll be uh, t plus 3, 
and a t minus 3. All right, let's input that and see what happens. <clears throat> okay, to input though, I need those parentheses in here. So then I need to make sure I use the same exact variable. Some of you guys have an s, some of you guys have an x. So t to the second plus 9, close off that parenthesis, open up a new one, t plus 3, close off that parenthesis, start a new one, and t minus 3, close off that parenthesis. Okay, that's the way it probably should be inputted. Again, check it. Syntax, it says is okay. Let's submit. Let's see what we get. Let's see if we get the correct answer. Yay, all right, another green. I call them green stars, green ribbons, whatever you want to call them. That's cool there. Okay, number 13 is the next one. And again, your problem could be a little bit different from mine, but it's really the same process. So 9a cubed minus 25a. Same problem here. Okay, so I have to figure out how to simplify this. Well, first thing I notice is that I have a t a, a cubed, and then I have another a over here. I have an a in common in both these terms. 9 and 25 don't have anything in common. So at this point, I'm going to take out an a out of both those terms. It gives us 9a squared minus 25. Then I ask myself, you know, does this factor down some more? Yes, that is a perfect square of 3a. That is a perfect square of 5. So how about this? a on the outside, 3a plus 5, and 3a minus 5. That should be the input there. All right, let's input it, see if we are correct. So I have an A on the outside. Oh, and you know, notice another thing is here. If you use a capital A when you sh when the variable is a lowercase a, that's going to be a problem because it's not the same variable. Lowercase variables are lowercase variables. Uppercase variables are uppercase variables. So 3a plus 5. Close parenthesis, open up a new one, 3a minus 5. Close off that parenthesis. Again, click the preview button. Syntax says it's okay. Let's submit it, see if we got it correct. Yes, I think I like that one. Okay. And the last question for 1.4 is this one. And it gives you a little hint of what to do. It says factor by grouping, using the grouping method to factor. So let's try it on the other slide. All right, let's go for it here. So notice you have three, <coughs> no, you have four terms this time. So I guess the first thing to ask yourselves, is there a greatest common factor that goes into all four terms? In this case, it's going to be a no. But we still want to be able to factor down a term with, or a polynomial with four terms inside it here. Okay, so how do we do this? We do this through the means of something called the grouping method. And again, on the directions, it does get a hint at this here. All right, where students run into the, the problem with the grouping method, there's a little minus sign right here. So you just can't put in parentheses right here. So notice, real quick, I'm going to do this here. If you just put in parentheses right here, have you changed the problem around? Yes, you have, because when the when the negative distributes to the 12x, it's still okay. That's going to be a minus 12x. When the negative distributes to the 8, it's going to get a minus 8, and that's not what we had originally. So when you do this, be very careful not to just put in parentheses the grouping method always 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 has a a plus sign right there so this is how you start off the grouping method grouping method goes here the first two terms go inside the first parentheses the last two terms with that little minus there the last two terms go inside the last parentheses now we can start factoring what is common to the first parentheses i think i'm going to take out a an x out of here. Left or actually no, an x squared even. Cool. All right, with that. All right, and leftovers would be looks like 3x mm, minus 2. Okay. What goes out of the second parenthesis? Now we want those parentheses to be exactly the same. So I think I'm going to factor it a negative 4. Because when I factor a negative 4, negative 4 times a 3x gives you negative 12x. Negative 4 times a minus 2 gives you a, negative, a positive 8. Cool. Okay, then what we do is we factor out a binomial factor. We factor out the 3x minus 2 that's actually the same there. All right, leftovers. 
There it is. Now the question is, can we factor this down any more? Yes, we can. Factors down into this, this part right here. X squared minus 4 really is x plus 2, x minus 2. All right, let's see if we can put that in. 3x minus 2, x plus 2, x minus 2. All right, inputting this here, 3x minus 2, x plus 2. Oh, I'm going to put in the plus sign the way it's supposed to be. And x minus 2. All right, let's see if I get them all correct. Again, I'm going to <clears throat> click the preview button just to make sure our syntax is okay. And let's submit it. Taking me a little while here. Yes, okay, I'm good to go. I am uh, four for four. Question one, question nine, question 13, question 15. Those are all on the form. And so there they are. There's the answering of them. Again, your problem might be just a little bit different, but the process and the logic should be the same for each of those.